Tell me, what, what did you discover when you went back to learning? What were the things you discovered that you didn't know before? Well, I suppose I only knew the basic things. I could read mm -hmm. pretty okay, <laughs> but I was very bad at applying things on paper. So when I went back to uh, the Return to Education programme, it was basic maths, English. I used to get letters or see letters that people had written. And you know when you'd see the full stop or mm. these squiggly things that I would call them? Well, I had never heard of an apostrophe. Oh, I see. And the first day that the tutor said it, I just could not, I couldn't believe, like... So uh, you talking about the apostles? I, <laughs> I, I believe it or not, I did. No, no, and I, I, but I did. And I kept, I laughed every time she'd mention apostrophe. Did you have apostrophe? It just kept coming to my mind. Now, believe it or not, that was, I had never heard of it. It's coming along nicely, I think. I Isn't think. it? Yes. Listen, tell me about the VTOS scheme that you're on. Oh yeah, yes, well, you see, uh, I qualified to go on the VTOS mm. when I had finished on the Return to Education programme. I'm finding it very enjoyable. I'm learning a lot now about the computer, which I didn't know until uh, I've gone there. Plus, I have an art class as well in the VTOS. Like, overall, it is quite enjoyable, and I'm settling into it now. Oh, that looks great, Eileen. You're flying along with yeah. that. Scratching away, Louise. Scratching away, yeah. scratching away. So how do you think that looks, Louise? It looks fine, it looks fine. We, we can move on to the next stage now in a few minutes. Um, I have a little bit of preparation to do with the inks and that, so maybe you'd like to have a look around. And uh, oh, I think yeah, you're going really to meet well. Cathy out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. very She's good. taking us to the car museum. Oh, the car museum, mm. that's yes. great, that's great. So while you're doing that, I'll just do a little bit more preparation and we'll see you in a while. Okay, so okay. thanks very much, Louise. Okay, no problem. Eileen doesn't have a computer at home, so when she had wanted to make a booking for herself and Derek to visit Airfield, she went back to her local adult learning centre in Leakslip, where tutor Sheila Downey gave her a hand. I want to look up Airfield Trust. Right, you have the email address there? Yes. Just type it up here in the address. Oh, yes. Box there, www. Dot Airfield. That's it. Is that it. And you can press return or go, whichever you like. Yeah. There's your website for you there now. It looks nice. So will I scroll down here? Or? No, if you just click there on contact and you want an application form, is it? I do, yes. Click on form there. Often when you look up a website, you'll need to fill in an online form. Say if you're asking for something to be posted to you or if you're booking a flight online. Generally speaking, forms tend to ask for the same information each time, such as your name, address and contact number. Sometimes on a form you're given a list of items to choose from. For example, here you have to put in a date. If you click on the arrow beside the first number, you are given all the dates in a month from the 1st to the 31st and you choose the one you want. This list is called a drop-down menu. Online forms can be very long, but you don't always need to give all the information that's asked for. If we look at these two lines, we can see that there's an asterisk. That's the little symbol that looks a bit like a star beside each one. If you check at the end of the form, you can see that this means required field. This means that you must give this piece of information. Online forms aren't that difficult to use. They generally ask for the same information as other forms and they use features like drop-down menus. Once you've tried filling out a few of them, you'll soon find that they're often easier than other types of forms. With the booking for the visit to Airfield made, it was time for Eileen to make up her mind which of the art workshops on offer she was going to attend. She went along to the Irish Art Fair in the RDS in Dublin to talk to some of the artists and get a few ideas. Are these watercolours? Yeah, they're watercolours. The typical watercolour is plenty of water on a plain piece of paper. So you work in layers, so you put your colour on, bleed it into the water. 
And you see this effect here, like how would you get that? Well that's dry brush, take plenty of colour, ring, uh, ring out your brush, plenty of colour on it and bring it across so you get patches of white through and the colour going through. Are they actual they're, drawings? They're, they're all pencil work. It's graphite, pencil. Uh, this one here, for example, the original of this would have taken about 70 odd hours. I have only started painting in the last couple of months. I do landscapes and Lovely. stuff like that. And do yeah. you do, do, will you take a photograph and work from that? Or yes. do you do? Or oh. else maybe someone would give me a picture uh, that they had painted. Ah, okay. And I would, uh, that's the sort of thing ah, I'm working with at the yeah, minute. That's a lovely discipline thing. You've got, to be, you've got to have discipline to do that. But the key for me is, is always to paint, even on days when you don't feel like it. But I say just get out there and paint, just get on with it and do it. This looks very interesting. What exactly is it? This is actually a screen print by the Irish artist Frank Kiley. It's a traditional screen print where he's produced uh, a stencil and, and pulled oil ink across a screen print to produce, build it up layer after layer. To start off like as a beginner, would it be very hard or...? It will be worth putting the effort in to, to, get, to, to get something which is a clean, just a clean, fresh, simple image. So I think it's worth trying. Yeah, well I think I'd actually give that a try. I think yeah. that's very nice. It's a fabulous car museum, I must say, Kathy. Thank you. How many cars are in here exactly? Well, we have uh, four cars here. Um, the Overends uh, were very much involved in cars, vintage cars. And we have a Rolls-Royce, 1927 Rolls-Royce. We have the 1923 Peugeot. And it's a tiny little thing. Yes, what? and it was actually nicknamed the Flea. The Flea? The, the Flea, because it was so small. It's only eight horsepower. So, Cathy, would it be possible for us to sit in one of the cars? Of course, yes. I'll sneak over here. I could be your chauffeur. The wheel is huge. My goodness. Now, madam, oh. where would you like to go? Oh, I'd love to go up the mountains for a little track. What you is that know. sound? Have you got your phone on? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's the text alert. A woman has just won a lot of money down in Cork on the lotto. On the lotto? Yes. Oh, why, what are you doing getting a text alert? Well, now, I don't subscribe to many things, but that's one thing I do subscribe to because I really love to be kept up to date. Fair play to you. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. It doesn't matter. I'm sure we'll get over it, I'm sure. There's no key, Cathy. No key. Mobile phones are a great way of getting in touch with people. But nowadays, they can be used for so much more. This Get It is about using mobile phones to receive text alerts. You may be familiar with using mobile phones to send and receive text messages, but did you know you can also use your phone to receive regular updates on subjects such as the news, the weather, or even sports? Let's look at a couple of examples. This phone uses the Vodafone service, so we go to the Vodafone website at www.vodafone.ie and sign in using the phone number and a password. Once in the website, you'll see a section on text alerts, so we click there. Here we see we can receive information on entertainment, news and weather or sport. Let's try the news section. There are several choices here, but let's check the All News option. Like many things in life, you have to pay for the service. You do this by subscribing and the charge varies depending on your account. The message then confirms that you have subscribed to the service. Now you will receive regular news updates on your phone in the form of text messages like this one. Text alerts can be a useful way of keeping in touch with what's happening, but they can also be costly. So check with your phone service provider to see what alerts are available on your phone and how much you'll be charged. There was to be no drive up the mountains in a vintage car for Eileen and Derek. 
Instead, it was back to the print room where there was a lot more work to be done yet. OK, Eileen, we're ready now for the next stage of our print. Oh, very and good. And this stage is where we apply the ink to the plate. Serious operation going oh, on I'm here. I'm telling you. <laughs> After all that <laughs> scratching now. We're going to get the ink. This is the ink over here. Yes. And we'll use this to apply the ink to the plate. So we're going to take a bit of ink like that and put it down onto the plate and pull it across. OK, and we cover the whole plate. Take that off and there's your drawing. Hey, hey. Yeah. Very nice. So are you pleased with the Mylene? Oh yes, I think that's lovely. Another new yes. skill there another today. Another new skill, lovely. exactly. Yeah. I've learned something new today. Mm. And another means of communication. Exactly. Well, while we're waiting for these to dry and then get them framed, you can have a look back at what we covered in today's Read Right Now. This week, our reading tip was about how sometimes symbols are used instead of words to convey information. And we see them all around us, from the no smoking signs everywhere these days, to the dry clean symbol on your clothes tags. In our writing tip, we looked at how online forms are often used to gather information instead of printed forms. We saw that as well as typing in information, Sometimes you can select an item from a drop-down menu. Our spelling tip explained how rhyming words like plum and drum can be a very helpful way of learning to spell new words. By learning the spelling of some words, you can also learn the spelling of words that sound the same. However, you need to be careful as sometimes words that sound the same are not spelt the same. Finally, our Get It this week was about using your mobile phone to receive text alerts on everything from sports to weather to news, as long as you're willing to pay the extra charges. They really are nice, aren't they? Lovely, Eileen. And it's, it was great to be able to do them with that plastic where we could look at the composition beforehand. So when you see them on the wall now, it's, you see it really come through to the end. Yeah, they really great. do look They're well, really lovely. don't they? Yeah. Are you pleased with your work? I'm very pleased with them. Are they going to remain here or are you going to take them home with you? Oh, I'm taking them home. Please. Yes, dead yes, Well, dead continue right. to admire them there, ladies, if you would. And I can tell you at home that if you want to get a free copy of the Read Right Now workbook, all you've got to do is contact Nala by phoning them on 1800 20, 20 65. It's a free phone number, 1800 20, 20 65. Next week, I'll be meeting a lady called Biddy McDonough from Cork who will give me a unique insight into her community. She'll also be explaining how communications technology can be used to promote local services and events. So until then, goodbye. <laughs>